Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to episode 15 of the Twitter application series. In today's video, I want to discuss a pretty common question that I get a lot on this channel. And a lot of people are asking me how I kind of manage the images that I download inside of my application. So in today's video, I'll use this component included inside of LPTA components called cached image view. And this component basically helps me uh, cache all of my images and also loads the images from an external source. So let's kind of begin with kind of where we left off in the last episode, and then we'll just go from there. All right, inside of Xcode, we have this uh, service file, and whenever we, we run this application, we get this error message inside of our application. And the reason why that is showing is because home with error is the endpoint URL that we are hitting for our JSON file. So I'm gonna modify that back to the correct uh, URL endpoint, and we can get our home page to render out the home.json that we kind of are uh, seeking here. So that's really nice. And if I tab back over to the sort of completed application, which is this guy right here, you notice we have Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow inside of the left side for the users and also the tweets right here. So how do I do that very easily inside of my application? Well, let's look at the uh, JSON file first to see what's going on with our user object. And if you take a look at all of these uh, little dictionaries, we have a property called profile image URL. And for this example's sake, let me just copy and paste that URL, hit the download, and you see Captain America right here. So that's how that works, pretty straightforward. Hopefully you guys get what is going on. So along with the uh, users, the tweets also have this user object with this profile image URL right there. That's where all of those images are coming from. So I wanted to show you that because inside of our user object, we are not uh, parsing out the profile image URL property. So let's fix that right here by first uh, saying let perhaps profile image URL be of type string. And down here, let me just put it with these properties, profile image URL equals JSON bracket profile image URL and hit string value right here. So that's pretty good. If I run the application to make sure that everything is still in order, um, you'll see that nothing has broken yet. So let's go to exactly where we want to use this profile image URL, which is inside of one of these user cell uh, rows that you see in the first section. And inside of uh, these cells, you have this thing called profile image view. And so the way the caching and the loading of images work is that instead of LBTA components, I have this uh, extended image view class called cached image view. If I paste that there and paste that in here, we have now this profile image view kind of uh, it's a type of cached image view now. So if I want to do something like this, profile image view, load image, I need some kind of URL string, which is conveniently how we kind of set all this up to be profile image URL. So let's just run this to see if the cells will render out the user's profile image correctly. So running the app, we get Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow on the left side for all of our user cells, which uh, kind of is exactly what we want. So one thing I do want to clean up here inside of this user cell is this profile image property from the user. I don't really need it anymore because I'm expecting all of my images to come from an external source. So I'm going to remove that. And in the user object, let's remove profile image here and this very, very silly property setting down here. So that's going to clean up all of the user properties for me. And inside of the tweet cells, I also want to load the images belonging to the tweet user. So I am going to hit, let's see, tweet cell. And inside of this profile image view, which is kind of showing me at the moment, I will say cached image view and paste that in there. And uh, you see, you have to integrate or import LBTA components to have this property available. 
I am now going to access that user from this tweet object. So you see tweet has this user property on it and also profile image URL looks like that. I would say profile image view, load image, and this URL string is just this down at the bottom. And let me just get rid of that space and reload this entire app. And all of the tweet cells will now properly render out the profile images belonging to the user, which is conveniently this like that. It's pretty good. Uh, if you want to kind of look at how this load image call works, you can command click into it and it takes you inside of this file cached image view. And basically cached image view is just a normal UI image view that has access to some kind of caching mechanism, which is this guy right here. And uh, every time you hit load image, it kind of checks the cache for the image. If it's able to find the cached image, it uses that image instead. Otherwise, we fire off some kind of data task and then upon completion of fetching that external image, we kind of call the setting of the image inside of the UI image view. And then we also stuff the cache with that proper image. And that's kind of how a cache works. I do recommend that if you are kind of interested in how caching works, especially if you want to write your own image cache, uh, cache definitely look up the code inside of that library. It should help with how uh, you would kind of time out and expire the items inside of your cache. All right, anyhow, uh, long tangent there. I want to also show you guys how to fix the sizing of our cells, uh, namely the sizing of our tweet cells to not include all of this white space in between the text right here and the text right there. So basically, I want to only uh, include, the, um, uh, include enough size in terms of the height to properly encase the text. So the way to do that, is to go to home data source controller and look at this method called size for item. So this guy right here is estimating all of the heights. You see the estimated frame uh, for these user cells right here. So let me just make that a little bit more definitive in the code by saying if index path dot section is the first section like so. So this is the first section of users. And I'll just copy all this code in here and paste that in there. And for the else if uh, index path dot section equals the other set of, let's see, the tweets down here, we'll do something else. So let's see, our tweets like that. Uh, let's see, size estimation is a pretty good comment. Now what do I want to do is to also estimate the height for all of these uh, tweet messages. So the natural thing to do is the very, very evil uh, thing of copying and pasting, which I just did right here. So I'm gonna copy all this code inside of this block and paste it in there. And basically uh, this is complaining because I don't have access to these user guys right here. And so the way to get the text that we wanna estimate is to get the tweet message text inside of this tweet object right here, tweet message. So I'm gonna use a guard statement to unwrap our tweet object. Guard let tweet equals uh, data source, let's see, that item, uh, index path, and we'll see like that. Uh, drink of tea there. And we'll cast this into a tweet object like so. And we'll say else and return dot zero. So when you return a dot zero object, it basically means that you have zero width and zero height because the dot zero is referring to this CG size. So that's kind of how you would escape out of this guard statement. And now we can replace the estimated text right here with something called a tweet thing dot message like so. And try to run our application now. So now it's going to estimate exactly how tall the message needs to be to uh, kind of eliminate the white space in between, which looks like that. Um, what you can do is to uh, increase the height a little bit by changing this 66 to perhaps, I don't know, 74. So I'm just adding eight pixels to the estimated height. And that's going to modify how tall the cell is going to be. I think it's going to look a little bit better that 
uh, you have this little spacing right here and right here, here, and right there. So that's kind of uh, what we want. And now I want to show you guys why copy and pasting is so bad. And basically we have all of this code that does pretty much the exact same thing. So why don't we refactor the code so that we can just have one method that does the height estimation for us. So in other words, I will go down right below the method and I will create this private method called estimated height for C4 text like that, underscore text, uh, be of type string. And this returns a CG float so that I can use, uh, use it inside of this estimated height guy right here. So let me just add the word function to make this compile properly. And with that method declared and defined, I want to copy and paste all the code that I had uh, before into that method and see what I get. So basically I want to return this estimated frames height right here. So let's just do that and estimated frame dot height and try to build this project. So the reason why this doesn't work is because the text that we're estimating is tweet dot message. So I'm going to just take that text from my method and just paste it in there. And let's see if I can build. So everything looks good. Um, I'm going to replace all of that code that I kind of copied and pasted. And let's just say let estimated height equals estimated height for text with the text of tweet dot message. And try to run this and see what we get. So we can't run that because we want to use estimated height instead of estimated frame dot height, which is just like that and see if the sizing is still the correct height, which it should be. I don't really see anything going wrong here. And that is exactly what it was before. So let's also replace the <clears throat> estimation for the user with the exact same call. So let's just make it super clear by retyping all of this right here. Let's say let estimated height equals estimated height for text of user dot bio text, which is what this guy is doing for the estimated text. And then I can just remove all this code and that as well. Use estimated height instead of that and try to run. So should be okay. All right. So I'm going to run that and we get all of the height estimation to be pretty accurate from what I can tell. So uh, one other thing I want to fix here is if you want to avoid these pyramid of braces like that and like here, uh, you can actually use a guard statement like what we did down here instead. So let's just do that because I actually prefer this pattern a little bit more. So let user equals self.datasource.item index path and as user like so else return dot zero. And then we can just use this, take that and paste it in there. We are <clears throat> no longer having this pyramid of braces, which is good. Uh, the reason why I know that I can cast this into a tweet, um, I guess for some of you guys that don't realize what's happening here yet, is inside of data source dot item, which is home data source here. I have item right here. This is the method call. And for section one, we're just returning tweets. So that's how we know it's a tweet object. And if it's not, it's just going to return a zero. So your application is safe from crashes. All right, so that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys now know how to very easily load and cache your images using this component called cache image view. Uh, again, I do highly recommend that you take a look at the source code to figure out how the caching library kind of works and how it all fits together. Uh, if you want to download the source code for today's video, you can find the download link in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, hopefully I can show you guys how to uh, support tweets that have images inside them. And these images are going to be varying in size, so it'll be a uh, very interesting video. That's going to be it for me today. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.